Welcome home. This is Audio EXP for the 26th of February 2022. And the title of this episode is Perspective. Sean Merrin is in the spotlight this month, as voted for by patrons. And the interview with Sean is live. We talk about how he was one of the first to publish in the DMs Guild and how solo project writing differs from the work he does with Ghostfire Games. We also talk about the future, including, although just briefly, Kickstarter. It's kind of a weird week to be talking about games and geeky geeky topics at all, to be honest. As the start of Routinely Itemized touched on, this week is the start of a land war in Europe, of tanks, of shelling, of death. It's kind of wrong to ignore that, and yet, in my weekly game over in Discord, we've taken the unusual step of declaring it free of politics and war chat. We need to escape, to hide for a bit, and we're thankful that we can. I don't know what this means for the podcast. We're still in the pandemic, but I don't sign off the podcast urging people to wear masks anymore. COVID-19 was never a taboo subject on audio EXP. Should the war be? I did get a little heavy on the blog. I got more than one email about an offer from Atlas VPN to give away free accounts to journalists in the Ukraine. I noticed that the PR team seemed to be coordinating the offer and I was torn between the chance of that being a cynical effort to sell software on the back of horrible suffering or the company's most agile team reacting with heartfelt sincerity to a crisis. I wasn't even sure how much a VPN could help with the ongoing cyber warfare, although mine does offer some infosec, so maybe others do as well. There are about three to four disclaimers on every page on the blog to say that any link on Geek Native might be an affiliate link. This is often determined in real time and after behind the scenes deals of which I have no control over. I took this chance to remind readers with a hand typed note at the end of the Atlas VPN article because it would be typical of me to poke at a company for maybe making money during the war only to stumble into doing that myself. However, this week's title, Perspective, wasn't coined with VPNs in mind. It comes from social media rows earlier this week. Cubicle 7 announced Doctors and Daleks, and Twitter erupted. Doctors and Daleks is a Doctor Who RPG powered by D&D's 5e. Look, it's okay not to like D&D or 5e. It's okay not to like Wizards of the Coast or Hasbro. It's okay to like them too, or to have no opinion. Weirdly, all this seems to be controversial. Cubicle 7's decision to have a version of Doctor Who on 5e seemed to conjure up floods of toxic comments. Regular listeners will know my stance on this. The existence of a game that you don't like should not threaten or upset you. You should not worry about it. You should worry about human suffering and superpowers at war. Now, of course, it would be hypocritical of me on my own self-funded loss-making podcast to say people shouldn't share their opinions. I'm just saying there's a way to do it without being a jerk. You can have thoughts without needing to articulate them as a personal attack. I'm also not saying that you shouldn't be critical of people. I'm critical of Nazis. There's no debate in my mind of whether it's acceptable to punch a Nazi. Punch them, get slugging. What I'm saying is, it's all about perspective. Sh- shall we move on? Shall we talk about Children of Art instead? That's the big new actual play Twitch show. Yes, it's 5e. No, it doesn't seem to be D&D. Deborah Ann Wall, a confirmed gamer, known from True Blood and Daredevil, will run it. One of the players will be Adam Bradford. He's one of the co-founders of D&D Beyond, but left to join Demiplane. And since then, Demiplane has grown, got involved in more projects. It's Demiplane's Twitch channel that will host Children of Art. It's a gamble, but it feels like a savvy move. It's absolutely going to put Demiplane on a lot 
more people's radar if the show takes off and grows in popularity. Okay, if that's D&D and the TV screen medium, what about D&D and paper? Artist Stephen Cummings is a talented illustrator who worked on some of Jim Zub's Evil at Baldur's Gate comic series. Stephen's put original paper sketches for the comic up for sale. Now, I presume he's entitled to do so. I'm less sure whether this sort of thing appeals to tabletop gamer geeks in general or whether it's exclusively comic book collectors. Jim Zubstar seems to be constantly on the rise, but I'm not sure how many of these pages have been snapped up. I imagine sketches of comic books, even published ones from you know relatively big names, are common because you just need so many of them to bring the comics to print. I'm no expert, but I also presume that a generous supply depresses the prices of things. On printed things, uh, printed copies of Darker Hue Studios' Haunted West, the RPG, are on the way. This is a weird West game that takes the time to amplify rather than whitewash the roles of people of colour in America's Old West. And yes, there were Twitter rows about that too. The news is that RTG, the cyberpunk publisher helmed by Mike Pondsmith, will distribute the game. I think it's the first time that RTG has acted in this way. It could be a case of a medium-sized publisher helping a smaller one out. However, it's not impossible that RTG has logistics aspirations, and it could do this for other publishers. It's one to watch, certainly. The other bit of cyberpunk and RTG news is that Cyberpunk Red now has dating rules. You can download those uh, life path or date path optional rules from RTG's site for free. In truth, it's been a busy week for geeky tabletop news. Uh, let's pick some and get into it. Um, the World of Darkness story in particular, I think, should have had more coverage. A company called Explored will make a game called Vampire the Masquerade Milan Uprising. That's probably a board game? You see, Explored makes those electronic boards that I spent much of 2021 predicting would feature heavily in 2022 because of the relationship between hardware and subscriptions. You buy the board hardware once, and then the system, known in this case as Taburu, runs the game, acting as NPCs, revealing the story, and essentially being the GM or storyteller. And the deal between Paradox and Explored is a multi-game one. Milan Uprising is a Taburu game, but the Explored CEO took the chance to mention role-playing whenever he talked about the deal. Even if there's no new, as we know it, Vampire RPG variant on the way, I think systems like Taburu will surely blur the distinction between the board game and role-playing games in general. Another bit of news from the tabletop games meet technology corner of the hobby comes from Roll20. The virtual tabletop's co-founder and CEO, Nolan T. Jones, is stepping down. He will still have some role, but not as CEO. Jones will be replaced by the ex-Googler and university professor Ankit Lal. Ankit is a product guy and he worked in G Suite, aka Google Workplace. Since we're talking about making digital things better, let's also talk about making physical things better. The good news this week is that Hasbro is stepping up their commitment to do that. The D&D owner has joined the science-based target initiative for sustainability. This means important commitments like getting rid of all plastic in their packaging. It means less corporate hand-waving and greenwashing because those science-based targets are stricter than a PR team might suggest. Before we get onto the bundle deals this week, there are at least two freebies worth giving a shout out. First up, there's the baby monster version of Zargoth's Tome of Familiars out this week. It's a preview of the Tome of Familiars, and it's worth it for the cute baby monster pictures alone. There's also the re-release of the 1999 quick start to D&D from Wizards of the Coast. It's Crypt of the Smoke Dragon, and that's now free from the DM's Guild. And the, the two bundles I mentioned are both at the bundle of holding. One is for the card-based Crime Capers of Fiasco 2020, and the second is for Elephant and Macaw Banner. That's an RPG set in 16th century Brazil 
it's deadly, and refreshingly, it's not Western and all Tolkien styled. And on that note, let's wrap there, keep safe, and I'll see you next week. <laughs>